metrics, the emperor's new clothes, and downloads. That's what we're talking about this week on Sounds Profitable with me, Brian Barletta. This episode of Sounds Profitable is brought to you by Podsites, podcast attribution. Go to podsites.com for more information. I know that you're listening to Sounds Profitable because podcast ad tech is important to you, but it's important to me that you are kept up to date on the latest news from the entire podcast industry. To help with that, here's what happened last week, no matter when you're listening, from James Cridlin at Pod News. I've talked with you all before about how the way we study podcast metrics need to evolve and change. I wrote an article on the topic all about making them more meaningful. In that article, I talked about Juleka Lentigua williams who wrote an awesome piece for Neiman Lab discussing better ways to gauge metrics. She was kind enough to come on the show and talk with me about her thoughts on the ways we should be measuring success. Thank you so much for being here. I'm really excited to have you here. We wrote an article a little while back, and one of the main focuses was about not just looking at downloads, looking at other metrics. And, you know, you wrote like a really killer article for Neiman Lab, something I wasn't super familiar with when I kicked off Sounds Profitable. So I want to turn over, like tell everybody a little bit about your article and Neiman Labs and and like what your goal was with that. Sure. Well, thanks for having me. I love talking shop with you. You're really smart <laughs> and you're funny. Oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, so I genuinely believe, and I think now through the course of four years, have actually proven that the download is kind of useless as a measure of success. <laughs> yeah. And <laughs> I think you agree. And I think yeah, a lot I, of I smart saying. people in podcasting agree. Yeah. It's like the emperor has no clothes kind of thing. And so... I had just been obsessively tracking other, you know, measurements for our shows over months. And then Neiman invited, you know, they invited a bunch of people at the end of the year to write an opinion. And I thought, okay, if there is any merit to what you've been obsessing about for the last six or seven months, put it down on paper and then share it so that other people can scrutinize it, right? Because I'm a journalist. And so that's really where you test your idea in the public arena. And so let me tell you that I was petrified. <laughs> and I have never actually said that, but I was absolutely petrified. When oh, it was a great article that. though. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. And so you'll notice, <laughs> so this is, this, is, this is such a giveaway, but you'll notice that I started with an anecdote about my kids. Because I was like, let me soften it up because they can't <laughs> hate somebody who's talking about kids, right? It's very true. It's <laughs> so, exactly why I use my son in my podcast. It's just like, yes. yeah, you might not like it, but you're still going to give me those five stars. Right. Like you're not going to hate on someone who's loving her yeah. kids and talking about chess with her kids, right? So I was like, let me just start right there. And then it, it was actually true. Like I do believe that the real actionable, measurable mighty measurement is the listen through rate because yeah. that's what tells you how sticky your show is. That's what tells you how long people are hanging out with your stuff. That's literally what tells you when they lose interest in the show. And so we've been tracking our listen through rates pretty consistently for over a year at that point. And then of course we started to try and influence them. Right. And so how yep. do we try to do that? We try to put really interesting things at the end of the shows and, you know, kind of tease them at the top of the show. We started to cut five minute, 10 minute intervals into some of our shows. Latina to Latina went from being 40 to 45 minutes to being 30 to 35 minutes to then being 25 to 30 minutes because I saw the incremental, you know, 5 percent, 6 percent, 8 percent growth. Every time we did that to the show, because what was happening was that we, of course, did such a good job of introducing podcasting to our Latina to Latina audience that then they went and found a bunch of other podcasts to listen to. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, we were the gateway and then they went and found so many other wonderful, you know, podcasts that were for them. And so we kind of like realized, okay, we have to stay competitive, right? If we want to remain one of their favorite shows, this is part of, of how to do it. 
The other thing that a, a good listen through weight allows you to do is it really gives you more flexibility in terms of your ads, right? Because I can yeah. say, listen, I've got listeners all the way through to many, you know, 22. So I, we can spread out your ads. We can, you know, drop a trailer here. Like there are so many things that I can do because I know that 80% of my show is being listened to. So there's just so many pluses to going with a listen through rate versus a download. Because the other thing is that people don't talk about, honestly, is that a download is 60 seconds worth of audio. And so, yeah, yeah. And I wrote about how you can play less than 10 seconds. You can play a second of an episode if you're on Wi Fi and download a 90 seconds, counting as an IAB download. Yep. I mean, like, that's the thing to focus on. The download metric and how we count it was brought to us by the IAB, the Interactive Advertising Bureau, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So, like, that's cool and all. And the intent there is to create a lowest common denominator that everybody can match around. Yep. And then we can sell to to the greater advertising space. But you hit on something really clever there. I mean, like getting around download hasn't opened up the tens and hundreds of billions of dollars that other advertising channels has. So the truth of it is, is like, yeah, it's a great metric when you need to use it, but there's a skill level where you surpass having to use it. And for internal growth, Download numbers aren't difficult. You want to double your download numbers? Evo Terra gave me this example. Just double the number of shows you put out in a month and boom, <laughs> your download numbers have doubled. doubled yep. So that listen through rate is really clever. You mentioned that you brought like a 45 minute show down to almost a 25 minute show, yeah, right? We did over, over about six months. Did that allow you to create twice as much content or did you just refine and condense that content? We just condensed it, right? Because... Alicia and I have 17 jobs. And so we we were not going to double the number of episodes, but we wanted to deepen, right? What we wanted to deepen was that need to get that weekly Latina to Latina fix, right? And so if the episodes were concentrated, right? If the episodes were concentrated and every single minute was something good, then yep. people would listen. When when I started really paying attention to the listen through rate, we were probably hovering in the mid sixties. We went as high as averaging eighty nine percent listen through rate. That's in pretty those great. Six months. That's way over industry yeah. standard. Oh, yeah. way over, right? Yeah. And then, of course, you know, regression to the mean. So now we we always oscillate between seventy five and eighty two, seventy eight, seventy seven, and I'm happy yeah. there. Like that's a yeah. really great number to be when you're only twenty five minutes to thirty minutes. That's a solid number, and so that was really really important. I mean, the other thing that I don't understand is if the advertisers set the download at sixty seconds, why do they want mid rolls? Well, I'll right, tell you, right. I can answer that one because the advertisers okay. didn't set anything. They they had to set something that was like that we could all get behind. And the truth is, is, you know, podcast hosting, the part that we spend so much time on is glorified file hosting, right? Like they know that the request was made and they know how much was sent. And so differentiating between 60 seconds and 50% of the episode sent, I don't know if it makes that much a difference, it doesn't. But, but you're super right. That listen through rate's great. The listen through rate part is real interesting, though, because you have to compile it from so many places, right? You can mm-hmm. only get it from Apple, Apple. Spotify, and Google. Yep. Amazon doesn't have a portal for it yet at the time of recording this. Mm-hmm. And things like Overcast or CastBox don't mm-hmm. have it, I don't mm-hmm. think. Nope. So that's app metrics that aren't third-party validated, which means they're part of a walled garden. Mm-hmm. But they're all walled gardens that we've accepted and yep. advertisers will accept. You're not only using this as justification for advertising, you're saying, hey, here's the download metrics. I hate them. You want to see them, but let me show you why our downloads are better. And that's why you're using the listen through rate. You're saying, let's not focus on, oh, we got more downloads this month. Let's focus on the fact we increased our listen through rate by 3%. What does that mean? Does that mean more space to add another ad? Does that mean we can extend content or go over a different thing? Does that mean a piece of content in that specific episode resonated and we should dig into it further? So much knowledge that can be gained from that, Mm -hmm. but not only on the production side, but on the advertising side. And on the editorial side, right? So this is the thing that I've broken many hearts on Clubhouse, on our (laughs) podcasting Seriously Club, uh, because you get a lot of really enthusiastic, energetic, first time, you know, podcasters. And I say to them, 
Okay, tell me what you listen through rate is. My what? My who? Yeah. Oh, you don't know what your listen through rate is? Then we can't talk about how to make your show better. So <laughs> come back yeah. next week. Set up your dashboard. Come back next week and then we can talk about it. It's so tough, though. It just bums me out that like Apple, Spotify, Amazon and Google have an opportunity here. Like Spotify and Apple have basically said like their goal is the silo. They really just want you to focus on them. They're showing that and they're trying to incentivize it. and good on them. I get it. It's competitive, just like it's competitive for all of us to want people to listen to our podcast first. Right. But like. The open nature of podcasting is attractive. There's no other channels like this. If they bought into the RSS feed, if they bought into improving it and making standards around it, they could be passing some of this data back to a host and they could do it in ways that conform a little bit while also taking uh, like taking unique advantage of that open nature and just building it better, right? (laughs) If these people who start the podcast, like you say, and have never logged into their Apple portal or Spotify portal because they're on Anchor, which automatically distributes it for them, and you don't need a login or whatnot, we're making it real tough for those people. Except that now, so I might end up writing about this uh, later, but the the other one that now we're focusing on a lot is unique listeners. Yeah. And so now I'm encouraging people to really pay attention to their unique listeners And again, because that is something we can influence, right? So in this world where our digital overlords control everything, there are still things that you can influence. And so you've got to pay attention to those things. So you're listening to the rate, 100% you can influence. Your unique listeners, 100% you can influence, right? Because this is about touch points, right? This is about finding ways to get your show in front of people. And secondly, to get those people to recommend your show to people who want to know what they're listening to. And so we've been paying a lot of attention to the growth of our unique listeners. Now that Simplecast, which is our platform, provides that information, And, you know, for some of our shows, for example, like Our Body Politic, which is a show about politics geared to black women and women of color. The other thing that I'm paying attention to is unique listeners in predominantly black cities. Right. Because that's where I want to be. Yeah, Yeah. that's where I want to be. And so because I can get a zip code breakdown, I can drill down to the zip code level on Simplecast. I'm able to literally track. And so we are tracking for that show five different zip codes around the country to see what is the penetration and how are our unique listeners growing in those zip codes where I care about the most or that representatively I care about the most. And so that's the other thing that people are so fixated on the download that they are missing, completely missing an opportunity to in real time, week to week, month to month, track how their shows are doing with far more valuable information. I think the download is a metric that's valuable and ad delivery is a metric that's valuable when you're doing hundreds of millions of downloads across the network and you are selling and buying to advertisers at scale. Because then it's about so many different things, right? Like NPR using downloads is valuable for how they sell it because they're so big. iHeart for themselves, ESPN, these companies that focus that way, it's no, not it's Costco bad. versus the bodega. Ex- exactly, <laughs> exactly. And they, but that's that's such a great example. But in your situation, so so and great the as your, <laughs> but you and you have to val- you have to push that value prop because yeah. I think that the smaller you are, like you're almost disadvantaged by talking about CPM, right? Like based on the number of downloads your show has. Like I tried to explain to somebody the other day, have you hit that golden fifty dollars CPM? with six ads per episode, completely 100% fill rate, right? And you got 10,000 downloads, right? That's $500? No, sorry, three, sorry, $3,000. Yeah. Doing that, five fifty times six, it's 300, then times 10, $3,000 for that. That's that's a lot of work to sell six ad spots at fifty dollars CPM and all that, right? And that's not guaranteed. And at ten thousand downloads, how long are you going to convince that advertiser to stay around before they've hit saturation? So, getting these other things, getting this other information, drilling down, really proving the fact that we don't need more data. I mean, it's always great, but we don't need device ID. We don't need actually listen at the time for the ad right now. You have it. You know, you have been proving and you wrote about that we have this data. It might not be 100%, 
you can pull it from all these different portals, mm -hmm. but you have it there. And then your hosting platform, like you said, drilling down to the geographies that make sense. That's yeah. so killer because that gives you enough information because you get to go to an advertiser and say, here are download numbers. I know you need to see those done with that conversation. Here's why we get in front of the audience that you need to be in front of period the end. Yeah. No. And I, you know, I have always maintained and I will always maintain that because our network on the original side and on the supply side, we focus on building the woman of color, Latina, Black woman, Asian woman, Native American woman audience in podcasting. Our per listener cost is, should be higher because yeah. no one is bringing these people to podcasting in mass. No one. We're the ones who have set out the red carpet for them, who have champagne glasses ready when they queue up and who, you know, really give them the things that they need exactly when they need them. And then they go out when they've had their manis and petties. I mean, I'm giving you very, very girly you know, <laughs> metaphors, but it's about creating the experience that says, yes, you are welcome here. There are things on offer here for you. Look at the plethora of stuff that we have curated for you. And then once they've picked out the things that they want from that, then they go out into the broader podcasting world and then they find other yeah. things. And so this is also part of why the listen through rate and the unique listens is for you know a company my size is far more valuable than than the download and we haven't even talked about we went 100 percent dynamic insertion january 1st this year congratulations and thank you yeah we we told our clients i think back in october and then we had to grandfather in a couple of people who had bought really really long campaigns but that yeah. was fine you know but on january 1st we went 100 percent dai and that's when I started to really have fun because <laughs> having the ability to go into the entire catalog just freed us up in an incredible yep. way. So now we've got staggered and layered advertising campaigns that run simultaneously that we run, you know, in the top 10 shows, in the middle 25 shows, in, I mean, you name it. We've got so many configurations going for how to serve the ads that we can have you know, five or six different advertisers in the same week and they never cross paths, you know? And so it's just a wonderful thing. Your mastery of those metrics, right? Your knowledge of your listen through rate means that when you look at your historical campaigns, right? You know, when you change your episodes, mm -hmm. so you can chunk your episodes into these episodes, get to this percentage, these episodes yep. get to another percentage. Yep. And if a campaign's not working before you run the next campaign on that inventory, you have the power to reevaluate. Can you move where the ad slot is? Right. Oh, can you reassess? Yep. That's, that's so critical that people don't talk about because people talk about like, well, I ran the campaign and it didn't perform, but it was a host red ad and, and this, and that it's like, there's so many little factors that you can put into it. And we do A-B testing, which is the other thing that a lot of people don't That's do. That's awesome. Right? And so we use our own stuff, right? So if, let's say, we have a new client, we want to test, you know, a, a new configuration that I've come up with, you know, for the DAI, we'll track a 30-second welcome to LWC for the new show and then do an A-B test, Right. With just that, yeah. which is basically free advertising for our clients, you know, but it gives us a ton of information about how this new configuration for DAI could potentially do in a show like Birthful, in a show like Latina to Latina or how to talk to mommy and papi about anything. Right. And so, I mean, I wish I had more time to literally just play around. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, that's the fun of it. And the cool part is, is because you built such a cool company, I'm sure at some point there's going to be someone in your company who's going to be able to dedicate the time to that. No, You're going to be able to put out me. reports. And I'm going to be so sad. <laughs> yeah. Well, we got to spread it out eventually. You know, we got we to gotta trade up the board people and that. But And you do such a great job at it. The thing I want to highlight that you said we kind of skipped over real quick was as an entry point, right? Like you found a niche for podcasting. Your network is based around a specific voice. And I think that, you know, people are still in this phase. They're like, well, me and my friends are going to talk about Dungeons and Dragons and we're going to be successful. And it's like, no, man, it's never going to happen. It's too saturated on that end. But the people who are passionate because podcast listeners, even new ones can super smell out bullshit and can figure out 
I am not ambiguously, like, dear listener. Yeah. You cannot see me <laughs> nodding. <laughs> you can, if you can figure out right in a new lane in a language that's not saturated yet, in a country that's not saturated yet, for a specific group of people that aren't saturated yet. There are not everybody listens to podcasts. And I'm sure that you jump for joy every time you see an Edison research poll that reflects the fact of a growth of, you know, the Latino community and, and growth there. The I think report, they're working on another one right now. Listen, we're one of the sponsors of the Heck, now oh, I did see annual, that. That's in US July. Latino, yeah, no, I got, well, I, I'm not even going to tell you because I already <laughs> saw it, but I am so excited. Like they're going to be earth shattering ripples across podcasting with this one. Yeah. I'm just telling you, you guys do not want to miss this one. The report yeah, and- is coming out in July. <laughs> Sign up for the webinar. You got to see it. Yeah. Uh, and that's and but the, the best part about that is there's going to be people like you have been screaming from the rafters like hey pay attention to this group they're there For years, and then there's, right? gonna, there's gonna be some stuffy <laughs> white guy who's gonna be like do you think we should have a hispanic podcast and like <laughs> you know what i mean but like it's but it's what it is right like it's the space is growing and what i'd say to anybody who's passionate is just like follow along with the things that juleka is doing because she makes such an inclusive space. I met so many amazing people. Thanks to you. Like, seriously, (laughs) I've had the opportunity to listen to people that are smarter than me talk about things that I would never even think about. And I've had the chance to network and get in front of them. And it's just, you're you're building such an amazing culture around what you're doing. And that culture is focused on elevating these voices, elevating this talent and making sure that everybody recognizes that You know, we don't just rest on stuff like Joe Rogan, that podcasting is barely that. So little of it podcasting is that. And it's grown and we need to recognize it. Ah, I'm so excited for the the Edison report. And I'm I'm just so thankful to have interacted with you and to have you on the show. Oh my God. Thank you for having me. This is such a happy nerd out, honestly. (laughs) I love talking about this stuff because I just I always say, and I know that this sounds really cheesy, but like, I'm not special, right? Like there is nothing extraordinary or different. I just started to pay attention to things that other people were ignoring. Like literally, that's the secret sauce. Like I just started to pay attention and to pay deeper and deeper attention and then to make connections between information that was already available, you know, which is why I emphasize that your podcast has to be a data informed creative project. It has to be a data informed creative project. Passion is not enough. Right. And so you build, right? Like your knowledge just builds, your understanding builds, like literally the synaptic connections that you're making about what you're doing, continue to expand. And then four years later, you know, you realize I was onto something, but I had no idea (laughs) except that I just pursued it. That yeah. was it. I just pursued it, you know? I I have one bonus question before we, we call it quits on this episode. You mentioned you watched Loki. And so I have to ask, <laughs> I, every episode, episode four just happened last night. I haven't yeah. watched it, but I was told that there's finally an after credit scene. Every single thing Marvel puts out, I will watch all of the credits because mm-hmm. I don't want to be spoiled. Hoping that there's an after credit scene. Why doesn't why doesn't everybody in podcasting do an after credit scene to hold people to the end? Have because you tried? They're it? not paying attention to the listen through rates. <laughs> do you That's do after answer. credit scenes? We do sometimes when it's something really special, like on Latina to Latina. We had Gina Torres um, when she turned fifty, and um, you know after the official goodbyes, she said to Alicia in a really loving way. I love what you guys are doing. This is wonderful. And when I was editing the episode, I was like, she loves us. Oh. So we totally <laughs> just put that in after the credits as a, oh, little, so as a little Easter egg for the people who do listen all the way through because it was so lovely. It was just so, so lovely. Um, and so sometimes we'll do that. We typically don't um, because we are just cramming so much good stuff into the into yeah. the episode honestly that we we want people to feel like ah, i am satisfied right before they get to the credits <laughs> smart that's the breathing room at the end yeah well thank you so much for joining me i'm positive i'll have you back on here 
I will come anytime. <laughs> Thank you for having me. And you're doing a wonderful work. I read your newsletter every week. Um, oh, I appreciate religiously. it. Uh, you write long, but... <laughs> I really do. So I don't read it when I get it. I put it in my to-read list, which is usually on Fridays. So on Fridays, I'm reading you. <laughs> there we go. Thank you. <laughs> And stick around for some special bonus content at the end of the episode. I've teamed up with Evo Terra to give you a minute long strategic thought that is guaranteed to shift your perspective on the present and future of podcasting as we all work to make podcasting better. Thanks to Juleka for coming on to help me expand on my article, Let's Make Podcast Metrics More Meaningful. If you liked what you heard and want to connect, you can find me, Brian Barletta, on LinkedIn, way less formally on Twitter as High Five RPG. And of course, you can email me at brian at soundsprofitable.com, spelled either way. The most important part about Sounds Profitable is providing you with more resources and making sure that I can answer your questions. So check out the link to Yappa in the episode description and leave me a message. And with your permission, I'll answer it live on the show. The Sounds Profitable podcast and all the cool ad tech bells and whistles you've experienced were thanks to our host and sponsor, Wooshka. Everything you've heard since the conversation ended was uniquely created to target you using their dynamic ad insertion features. If any of the callouts were wrong, let us know. The Sounds Profitable podcast would not be possible without the help and support of Evo Terra, James Cridlin, and Ian Powell. Thank you all for your help and support.